Hi, my name is Deidre. Thank you so much for joining me today for this class focused on how yoga can help relieve some of the tension, stress, and strain that we feel in the shoulders. Sometimes when we think about shoulder tension, we may think about how that comes from the work that we do. If we sit at a desk, if we work at a computer, but even a lot of the things that we do outside of work cause us to put our arms forward, right? So if we think about when we're cooking, when we're biking, if you have children, if you're picking up your children, all of that has to do with our arms kind of being in this forward position. And so when the arms are forward that way, see how the upper back is kind of spread and wide. And when that happens, not only does the chest sink, but can you see how the head is kind of pushed forward and then the, the head is just kind of supported there from the neck. So when we're in this position, we may feel the strain and tension in the shoulder. Some of us may feel it in the upper back, some of us in the neck. So today's class, we will work with postural alignment. So how we can work to extend the sides and open the chest, not only to align ourselves so that the, the position of the head and neck is supported from the upper back rather than being in this position. And that is something that we can bring into our work. So when we're sitting at a computer or if we're at our desk, we can work with this lift up through the sides, this opening across the chest so that our alignment is keeping us from pushing the shoulders forward, from pushing and putting that strain in the, the neck and shoulders. And we'll also work with some different exercises and stretches to just relieve that tension, that stress in the shoulders, upper back. So here we'll figure out how we can create space there, create mobility there to help release some of the tension and strain that is already there. So we'll have part of class today working on the therapeutic aspects that can help relieve the stress that's already there and then how we can correct the alignment that when we're standing or when we're sitting so that we kind of work to er eliminate the, the tension and strain that can come. So let's actually start today standing. You can stand with your feet and your legs together if that's available for you. If you need to separate your feet a little apart, that's fine. So the interesting thing is that sometimes the, the tension that we feel in the neck the, or the, the shoulders, we feel it in the neck and shoulders, but it may not be the, that may not be the root or the cause of the tension. Sometimes the tension that we feel starts it with the legs. So can you see here how I'm kind of standing and many of us may have a habit of standing this way where the thighs are forward. When my thighs are forward like this, the hips push forward, the lower back sinks in and the chest dips. And that then makes the shoulders kind of round and see how my head is forward and supported just from the neck. So to correct this, let's take the hands to the front of the thighs like this. Use your hands to push your thighs back. So the fronts of the legs move to the backs of the legs. And when you do that, we have to let a few things go in order to do that. So when we stand with the thighs forward, there may be a grip in the buttock, even a grip in the lower back or abdomen. So first, can you relax the abdomen, relax the buttocks, and then move the thighs back. And be okay with the tailbone coming out slightly. Be okay with your abdomen kind of falling into the t-shirt. The so it may feel like we're standing like this, and then we don't have to be that dramatic, we're just trying to let go of any grips that hold us in that position that, that can create strength. Feel here, once you move the thighs back, the weight shifts into the heels. Go ahead, push your thighs forward. And can you feel, you, you may even start to feel, oh, the buttock just pushed, the abdomen just gripped, the lower back is, is pushing also. But feel how the weight is more in the toes and the balls of the feet. So we may not see ourselves throughout the day. We may not have a mirror where we can look at ourselves and see, oh, I'm standing with my thighs forward. But throughout the day, we can start to bring awareness of where I'm feeling the weight in the feet. So if my weight is more in the toes and the balls of the feet, I know I'm standing with the thighs forward. And that's not just putting tension and strain in the hips, the lower back, 
but that can create stress and strain all the way up to the neck. So again, move your thighs back. So your weights in your heels. And, and even though the tailbone is coming out, even though the abdomen is falling into the into t-shirt, the take a look at your leg and see how the outer hip, outer knee and outer ankle, it's all in the line. And this is gonna help us for the next step. So we're moving the thighs back to bring this alignment to the leg. Now, once we have that sorted, do this with me now, lift and spread your toes. And then don't lift your toes. And then lift and spread your toes. And then don't lift your toes. And just keep doing this on your own a few more times, lifting the toes, not lifting the toes. And can you feel if anything is changing? Feel what happens when you lift your toes. Feels what happens when you don't lift your toes. And then again, lift your toes and don't lift your toes. For some of us, this is automatic. We might feel when we lift the toes, the, the lower back where it felt like it was dipping, all of a sudden that lower spine gets longer. And then when we stop lifting the toes, oh, there's a sinking again there. It, and then some of us may not feel any changes. So then we have to figure out what is lifting the toes? How, does, how is that changing or affecting the legs? When you look at your, lift your toes and, and look at your toes, when you lift your toes, can you link that to the kneecaps and the quadriceps, those muscles in the front of the legs? Can you link the lift of the toes to the firming of the muscles in the legs? And then don't lift your toes. And again, lift your toes and link that to the kneecaps and the quadriceps firming that. And then don't lift the toes. And now we may start to feel, oh, okay, when the toes, that lift in the toes helps me access and engage the muscles in the legs, I do then get this lift up through the lower spine. So what we're figuring out is when we're working to stand up straight, we don't have to push from the center. All we have to do is stretch the legs. So we move the thighs back. We got the lift in the toes to help us tighten the knees and the thighs. The next part of this is to press the heels down. As you press your heels down and we firm the muscles in the legs, can you now link the heels pressing down to the kneecaps and the quadriceps drawing up towards the hips? So the knees and the thighs, as we pull the muscles in the legs up, that helps bring a, a lift up through the lower spine even more there. So then relax a little, we'll put all of this together. Take your thighs back, so your weights and your heels, the outer legs aligned. Lift your toes to tighten the knees and the thighs so we engage and access those muscles in the legs. And then press your heels down. As you're pressing the heels down, inhale, pull the thighs up to the hips. So that stretch in the leg brings this lift up through the lower spine. Now take your hands to your hips. With your hands to your hips, inhale, Pressing into the heels, now raise the sides up. So that lift in the sides we find from the hips all the way to the armpit chest. And now keeping that stretch in the sides, can you take the outer corners of your shoulders, way up here, the outer corners of the shoulders back. And as the outer shoulders go back, the sides of the chest move forward. So if it's just shoulders back and there's no effect on the side chest, I may feel strain, especially in the back of the neck. Can you take the outer shoulders back and the sides of the chest here, moving forward away from the shoulders going back? Now, balance the head and neck straight, and that might mean for now that we bring the eyes to eye level. With the head and neck straight, press your feet, lift the chest, and then stretch your arms by your sides. And feel here, from the stretch in the legs, from the stretch in the arms, we're able to maintain this lift in the sides, the upper back moves in to support that lift in the spine and the lift in the chest, and even the position of the head and the neck. Take some deeper breaths here, deeper inhalation to lift the top chest more, more complete exhalation to relax a little so that we're not overdoing. So as you exhale, you can relax the abdomen, soften and relax the muscles on your face. And then with your next inhalation, swing your arm up. You can take your right arm up. And we'll take the left hand to the right upper arm to start, roll that inner arm towards your ear. Now we have been working a little bit with the arm, but sometimes that we take our attention to one place and the first thing that we did, the thighs back, we, we may lose. So feel where your weight is in your feet. If the weight feels more heavy in the toes and the balls of the feet, take the thighs back, lift your toes, press the heels. Now, as you press your heels, you can use your left hand to reach 
that right arm up. Even if the shoulder comes up, lift your fingers, lift your arms, lift the sides. Feel how that stretch in the arms bring this long length in the sides from the hips all the way to the fingertips. And then exhale, release, take that arm down. And we'll do second side. Inhale, stretch the left arm up. You can take your right hand to the left arm. Roll that arm in. Feel what happens to the legs. Can you feel if your weight is more in the toes and the balls of the feet? Relax the abdomen, relax the buttocks, take the thighs back. With your weight in your heels, lift your toes to tighten the knees and the thighs. Press your heels, pull the thighs up to the hips. And now with the stretch in the legs, lift the fingers, lift the arm to extend the side. So the fingers and the arms can lift themselves, but we have that right hand helping with the lift in the arm. So it's just giving that direction. And then exhale and release. We'll put this all together now for Urdhva Hastasana, upward arms pose. With your hands to your hips, take your thighs back so your weight shifts to your heels. Lift your toes to tighten the knees and the thighs. And then with that firmness in the legs, press your heels down. And remember, we're linking the heels pressing down to the knees and the thighs, lifting up towards the hips. And now keep that stretch in the legs as you raise the sides up and roll the shoulders back. Sides of the chest move forward as the shoulders go back. And from there, balance the head and neck straight. You can stretch your arms by your sides. That's it. And then to get ready for Urdhva Hastasana, we'll turn the hands out. And, and sometimes we take Tadasana like this, right, with the palms facing forward. And this is, a, this is a good idea to help open across the chest, to help connect the upper back in. But just feel, turn your palms forward, turn the palms to face the thighs. This is the classic. Palms facing the thighs is classic. But we, when we turn the hands out, ideally, that helps us open the chest more. That helps us connect the upper back in more. But in order for us to connect the hands turning out to the lift in the chest, we have to turn not only the hands, we have to turn the whole arm out. So turn not only the palms, turn the arms so that the inner elbows rotate outwards. Keep turning the arms so that the biceps turn out. Keep turning the arms so that the outer shoulder goes further back. And can you feel there that as the outer shoulder goes back, not only do the sides of the chest move in, but the upper back, the shoulder blades, and the back ribs move deeper into the body. So here we're starting to bring that mobility and connection to the upper back. With your next inhalation, press your feet and lift your arms up and over your head. Spread your fingers wide here. As you spread the fingers wide, inhale, press into the heels, lift your fingers, lift your arms, Lift your arms, fully extend the sides. Can you feel how the fingers and the arms pull up so much that the sides of the body get longer? And then exhale, take the arms out and down. Now, take your left hand behind your back and hold your right elbow. So this is, this is interesting. Let's start with the legs, take the thighs back, lift your toes, press the heels. Before we go to open the chest, we have to extend the sides. Before we do anything, we have to bring this lift up through the sides of the body. It's difficult to do here because we don't have the arm overhead to help us bring that lift. So as you press your heels down, can you let the upper arms lift a little so that the lift in the upper arms gives space for the side chest, side ribs, and sides of the waist to lengthen? Now with that lift, remember how we were turning the hands before. Can you turn not only the hand, that doesn't really help so much the, the chest, but keep, keep rotating that whole arm, even the elbow spinning in your hand. So the bicep turns out, the outer shoulder turns out, and there we can connect the upper back deeper in. When you're ready, press your feet, lift the chest. And then exhale and relax. We'll do the other side. So the right hand now holding the left elbow, take your thighs back. Lift your toes. As you lift your toes, press into the heels. With the heels pressing, you can raise the sides up. Upper arms can lift a little so that we have space to get that full extension through the sides. Now with that lift, turn your palm out, the palm of the left hand out. And remember, not just the hand, because that doesn't have an effect on the chest. The whole arm rotates. So if you just turn the hand, remember that nothing really changes in the shoulders, the upper back of the chest but keep turning, turning, turning that whole arm and feel there how the outer shoulder can go further back, how the side chest can move further forward. You might even feel that strong connection of the shoulder blade moving into the body. 
And that's the connection. When the shoulder blades move in, it brings this full lift to the chest. And as that lift in the chest comes, the head and neck, we, we really start to feel the position of the head and neck. The head and neck may feel forward. It may feel like we're standing like this, and we kind of are. So as you press your feet and lift the chest, let the base of the skull move back so that the base of the skull is in line with the tailbone. And then exhale and release. From here, stretch your arms out to the sides. And with an exhalation, bring your arms behind your back and hold your elbows. So this gets a little tricky because now we don't have so much space. So if it feels like the, there's no room to lift the sides, so go ahead and try and lift the sides up. And if it feels like you're just shrugging the shoulders but not getting that extension here, then you can separate your hands a little bit, maybe holding the forearms or even the wrist. And now with that space, take the thighs back, lift your toes, tighten the knees and the thighs. With that firmness in the legs, press your heels down and pull the thighs up to the hips. Keeping that stretch in the legs, take a deep inhalation, raise the sides up. Remember how the upper arms can lift to create space for the side chest, side ribs and sides of the waist to lengthen. Now with that stretch to the sides, can you take again the outer corners of the shoulders back? Because now this is challenging a bit more the upper back and the, the shoulders, we may work to take the upper arms back but the thighs go forward. And it may feel like the chest is open, but you guys can see, I'm just going back again to the thighs forward, pushing the hips. So can you, keeping the lift in the sides, can you also keep the thighs back so that as the thighs go back and then we take the upper arms back, we start to really bring that mobility to the upper back. Balance your head and neck straight there. Press your feet and lift the chest. And then exhale, relax a little. Stretch the arms out to the sides again. And then bring your hands behind your back. We'll take the other opposite elbows, forearms or wrists, just the opposite cross of the arms this time. Now, thighs back again. Lift your toes to tighten the knees and the thighs. With that firmness, press down into the heels. And as you're pressing your heels, take a deep inhalation, raise the sides up. Keeping that lift in the sides, keeping the legs back. Remember that, so sides up, legs back. Can you keep all that organized as you take the outer corners of the shoulders back? As the outer shoulder goes back, side chest moves forward away from the arm. Inhale. Press your feet and lift the chest, head and neck straight. Exhale and release. We'll take now, this is um, something that I started to do earlier in the pandemic when we didn't have the, the rope wall. And many of us at our homes, we don't have a rope wall. And if you're not familiar with the rope wall, uh, rope wall is, it's, we have ropes almost like straps connected to the wall that you can hold and lift from. So your arms held this way, you can lift the chest away from that. So if we don't have those things at home, we can use a belt. So if you have a yoga strap, make a loop with your strap that's about shoulders width apart. If you don't have a yoga strap at home, you can use an actual belt. You can use a scarf or t-shirt or even a um, towel and you'll just hold it behind your back like this. If you have that belt, the yoga belt, and you've made the loop, you can take the backs of your wrists inside the loop of the belt like this. So watch a moment here. For this pose, this variation, I take one foot forward and I'm gonna lean a little forward. So I'm just leaning forward so that the side of my body is right in line with that back leg. From here, I'll lift my back heel to stretch that leg up to the hip. I want to see that as I'm stretching the leg, the leg doesn't go forward because that again pushes the hips, sinks here, sinks here, and then the head and neck are in that position that's not supported. So the thigh of the straight leg, the back leg, has to move back and I stretch that leg up to the hips as I raise the sides up and I can lift the upper arms to get that stretch up through the sides. Here we have a little more space uh, because the hands are about shoulders width apart and if you need to separate your hands a little wider, you can do that. With that space, you may find the outer shoulders go back, sides of the chest go forward, 
kind of nicely on their own. If you're getting stuck there and the shoulders are not moving, the side chest not moving, then you can go back to how we were working before, how we can rotate the arms to get that space and connection. Once we have that sorted, I press off the back foot, stretch the arms down, and I can lift the chest away from the stretch of the arms and even release the head and neck. So that release of the head and neck comes from the support of the upper back. So let's put that all together. Take your belt behind your back. If you have the loop, you can bring the backs of the wrist inside the loop of the belt. If you don't have the belt loop, you can hold on to the sides of the belt with the arms about shoulders width or a little wider if you need. Let's step with the right foot forward first. You can bend that leg a little, lean a little forward so that the sides of the body are right in line with the back leg. Press that back leg thigh back, front of the thigh moves to the back of the thigh. Now with that connection, lift the back heel. As you lift the back heel, feel both legs stretch up to the hips. So the right leg even starts to get a little straighter as we lift and extend that back leg. With your next inhalation, raise the sides up. You can bring that lift in the upper arms to create space for the sides to extend. Now with that lift in the sides, can you take the outer corners of the shoulders back? And remember, as the outer shoulders go back, the sides of the chest move forward. If you need more space to get the shoulders back, you can rotate the arms out. With your next inhalation, press off the back foot, pull the belt down, look up, and lift the chest to the ceiling. Let the head and neck release as much as the upper back comes in to allow that. And then exhale and release. We'll switch sides, left leg forward, right leg back. Lean a little forward. As you lean forward, take the right leg thigh, the back leg thigh back, so the front of the thigh moves to the back of the thigh. Once we have that connection, lift the back heel so you have space then to stretch both legs up to the hips. Keeping the stretch in the legs, inhale, raise the sides up. Keeping that stretch in the sides, can you take the outer corners of the shoulders back? As the outer shoulders go back, press off the back foot, pull the belt down, look up and lift the chest up. So how much we can release the head and neck here it depends upon how much the upper back moves in. So if you're getting a lift in the chest and the upper back moves in, but not to the point that the head and neck can release fully, you might just look up a little and still feel that release of the head and neck. And then exhale and release. We'll do this again, this time with the, uh, both legs straight. So have your arms behind your back. Take your thighs back. Feet can be a, a hips distance here. With your thighs back and your weight in your heels, lift your toes to tighten the knees and the thighs. Press the heels down. As you press your heels, inhale, raise the sides up. And let's challenge the, the, the lift in the chest, the mobility in the upper back by raising the hands a little higher. Now with the thighs back, sides up, inhale, take the outer corners of the shoulders back. And as the outer shoulders go back, press your feet, pull the belt down, and lift the chest, let the head and neck release, again, as much as the upper back will allow. And then exhale and release. Let's take the belt to the side. And we'll take just a quick stretch for the side body. So you can come to a wall, have your hands about in line with the shoulders. You can go a little lower if the hips and hamstrings allow. From here, with the palms flat against the wall, just step back, roll the inner arms to the ceiling, press your hands to push away from the wall, and with that stretch in the arms, lift your toes, tighten the knees and the thighs. With that firmness in the legs, press your thighs back. So as we press the hands to push away from the wall and move the legs back, we get this nice stretch through the sides, from the hips all the way to the wrists. Head and neck can be quiet here and then exhale and release. We'll take one more pose, and this next pose is actually a supported pose. So the work, the effort, it's, it's so necessary to teach the, the, the alignment, the, those postural adjustments, how we extend the sides, how we open the chest, how we support that from the upper back moving in. It's important to know how to do that 
actively. So when we're sitting, when we're standing, we can have that, that posture, we can have that support. But it's also important to learn that in a supported position. And so that way we're able to rest in that extension. And that will actually help us find a bit of a balance there. So that it's not all doing, we're not all lift the sides, lift the chest. We still have to soften even when we're standing and doing that, even when we're sitting and doing that. And so we can start to bring that balance in by taking support. If you have a bolster, you can take a bolster on your sticky mat like this. If you don't have a bolster, you can take pillows. Uh, couch cushions work really well for this, uh, but pillows in general are fine. We'll have the bolster lengthwise so that we'll curve over. So the, the pillows that you have should be about the length of your back. And then if you have a blanket, you can place your blanket at the top of the bolster like this. So the blanket will be kind of a pillow. So for this pose, you can do with me, we'll sit with the sacrum against the bolster like this, legs bent, take your hands to the bolster behind you. Before we actually go back to rest, press your hands, raise the sides up. Remember how you can get that lift in the upper arms to create space for the sides of the trunk to lengthen. And then with that space, can you take the outer shoulders back? But remember, it's not just outer shoulders back. That can create tension. As the outer shoulders go back, the sides of the chest move forward. That's how we work to bring the upper back in. That's how we work to bring that lift in the top chest. And that's how we work to support the position of the head and the neck. Now, you might let that go a moment, and this next time, press your hands to lift your hips a little. Lengthen the buttock flesh just a little away from your support so the lower back is long, and then we'll curve ourselves over. If you have a bun in your hair, you can take the bun out. Sometimes the bun or ponytail in the back of the head will push the head up. So we want the head and neck to release completely. So once you have, the, once you can release the head and neck, you can adjust the blanket so that it supports the head and the neck. And then here, tuck your shoulders down and in. You can readjust the blanket under your head if you need to. So again, it's supporting the head and the neck. Take some deeper breaths here, deeper inhalation. Feel how the breath now helps to bring that lift and opening across the chest. The breath helps to expand the ribs upwards and outwards so the whole front body begins to open here sometimes that adjustment in the shoulders pushes the lower back so if that's happened here just lift your hips and lengthen the buttock flesh a little away from the waist and then see can you keep all that organized so nothing's disturbed there as you stretch one leg out at a time Relax the legs, relax the arms, let the whole back body settle here. Earlier in class, recall when we had to actively extend the sides. Now feel how the breath helps to bring that direction. With each inhalation, there is a full extension in the sides from the hips to the armpit and chest. Feel how the outer shoulders fall to the floor with the exhalation. So in the supported pose, we no, no, no longer have to take the shoulders back and the sides of the chest forward. That comes naturally just from the shape and position of the pose in support of the props. Let the back of your head rest into the support here. Allow the brain to release back, down, and in. As you settle there, arms and legs quiet, the whole back body settling, resting into the support of the bolster and props. 
and you keep on relaxing there as you soften and relax the muscles on your face. Relax your jaw. Soften your brow. Relax around your temples. Just let go here. Relax. Release. Let go your entire body. Let yourself settle here. Let yourself relax here for just a little while. Take a few more minutes here, a few more moments here. Take your time. With as little disturbance as possible, gently roll to your side. And we'll just push the bolster out of the way. And we'll take a few moments just resting in Shavasana with the back on the mat. So the back body can settle in a neutral position here. Feel how all of our work from the active work to the supported pose, how that helps us come into a Shavasana now that is supported from the earth, but still also supported from our own back, the strength of our own back moving in to support the release of the head and neck to support the lift and opening of the chest. And slowly here, bring your hands onto your abdomen. You can bend your legs. And stretch your arm out and just lean, roll to your side. You can rest your head, your head on your arm. And then keeping your head and your neck quiet, press your hands down. Let the head and neck come up last as you make your way up into a tall seat. Join your hands together at the center of your heart. Sit up tall. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice today.